Well, hi, and here I am again with a Ruth Ramble. And um, normally, I mean, I've I've sat and you know looked at this room, thinking, oh, you know, I should really set it up. I should put like things on the back here, making it look beautiful, and I should get the lighting better. But as I said in my last IGTV, I'm not going to do that anymore. Otherwise, I'm not going to get anything done. I'm spending too long worrying about the detail. And um, I once heard a little saying, a little quote. The quote for the day is this, done is better than perfect. So it, it's not a really a rant. It, it's more of a ramble, more of a Ruth ramble. But I'll just introduce you to my little room. Um, I have um, a studio at Farfield Mill in Sedba, Cumbria. Uh, England if you don't live in the UK and I share that with my partner Stuart Gray and when I'm filming it's not fair because he has to be quiet and it's also open to the public four days a week so that doesn't work so I've taken on another little studio and it's just upstairs and it's tucked away but even when I was in here last week and I was filming because it's all wooden floors outside, if anybody's got heels on and they're clip-clopping around, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do it at a particular time, come in when there's nobody here in the mill. I'm not going to worry about that either. So if there's clip-clopping, if there's some jets going over, because we are in that path, I'm afraid, here in Cumbria, um, so be it. And I was doing some filming last week at home. I thought, I'll do it at home. It's nice and quiet in an evening. First of all, the jets went over. I thought, well, thank you very much. So I clicked stop, started again. And then my dog, Kim, my Springer, came in, had a bit of a shake and just got like a little tinkly thing on her collar and then went and had a big drink of water. So I thought, thank you very much, Kim. So I pressed the stop button again. And then, blow me down, two owls were having a chat. Twit to who? I couldn't believe it. So do you know what? Now, if that happens, then that happens. So that's my little ramble there, but I'll just show you around. Okay, so, um, oh, I'll just have to turn it around, won't I? But it's, it's only little, and it's got loads of junk in it, and, but it's got a little skylight up here. Let me just, that's, that's the mill out there. I'll do it from here. So, yeah, it, it's fine. And I've had to put this big blanket up to try and sort of deaden the sound, because it is a bit echoey, I understand that. But this is where all the work happens here. And I've got this great screen. I do love it. It was a bit of a whim, really. I think, well, why did I buy that? But it's, it's coming to its own because it does stop the sound from bouncing around the walls a little bit. So that's where I'm going to be doing some bit of working and a bit of filming. Because what I thought we could do today is a bit of a challenge. I'd like to do an altered book with you. Now, if you've never heard of an altered book, even if you're not really, you don't consider yourself to be really, really arty, I'm just going into my little pod. Yeah, here's my little pod. Here you go. And my workspace. Um, even if you don't think of yourself as being arty, it's good fun. And when I was a high school teacher and I was teaching art, I remember teaching year nine, which is always a difficult year group to teach because some of them weren't interested in art and couldn't wait to drop it. But this project I set up, they, they loved and it was actually altering a book to make it more of a, a sketchbook, but it's not a sketchbook, it's a, it's a cross between scrapbooking, journaling, a visual diary, and a sketchbook. And it's where you get an original book, you know, an ordinary hardback, whatever, and you destroy it. <laughs> but you destroy it in a good way. Let's not say destroy, that sounds really destructive, doesn't it? That's very negative. Don't be negative, Ruth. We alter it. We change it, we adapt it into something else which is equally as beautiful. So I thought that would be fun. A few people have, have shown an interest in that. So in a minute, I'm going to put my uh, phone on my tripod here and I'm not gonna worry about stopping it and starting it. You're just gonna have to bear with me and it'll all be wobbly. And I might just have to have a little quick look underneath to make sure that it's actually filming the right bit. Warts and all, yeah. And then I will take you through step by step um, how to start. And I've not practiced this. I've, made, I've done them before, but I've not rehearsed this. So we'll just see how it goes. And we'll do it over a few. I'm not even going to say over a few days because I'm not promising I'm going to be here tomorrow. I'm not going to put myself under any pressure now. But the next time I come into the mill to do some, well, I shouldn't call it work, should I? Some creativity, then hopefully 
you'll come along with me. And I think on Instagram, I think if you are on my page, it's like a little bell icon at the top. And if you want to press that, you'll know when I post. So you'll know when I next post something. Uh, and then we can do it together. So today we're going to look at the book we're going to alter and how to prepare it. OK, so bear with me while I now put this onto my tripod. Um, it's going to get all wobbly now, folks, but here goes. OK, and then I'll have a little look under here. Hello, here I am. <laughs> it might be a bit cockeyed. What oh, if I just change this? Oh, you see, it's wobbling now. It, there you go. Just, I'm sure there are some apps out there that mean you can sort of do both. Yeah, there you go. Right, well, I'm not going to talk about this in a minute. That's in a minute. So what I want to show you what an altered book is, but this is an altered book, but it's not an altered book, really. So I'll give you an idea. Somebody bought me this. Well, actually, Stuart bought me this for my birthday. And it's a sort of altered book, but in a way, this person has actually made a book from scratch. I've got a wobbly table, too. Oh, I'm so professional. Let me just put a little bit of something underneath the leg here. If you sort of spent all this time getting it perfect, you'd never do anything. Right, so this person has made this book out of envelopes. Uh, and then they've put like this stuck bits of paper on. So it's it's sort of an altered book, but it, in a way it's like a brand new homemade book. But it, it's similar in a way that they've actually stuck things in. And then you can just draw on top of it. And they've all got different surfaces. And you can, you know, and on the front, it's just got a bit of cave facet there and it's an artist journal. And it, you can see I've started to work in this by doing bits of drawing. You can do paintings on bits of watercolour paper and stick them in. Um, you can put leaves. Yeah, you know, do you get the idea? Um, yeah. And, and I like putting quotes and things like that, like the earth laughs in flowers. How lovely is that? And after climbing a great hill, one finds that there are many more hills to climb. And Nelson Mandela said that. So I like that. And you put stamps in. Uh, so you need like a bit box, a bit box of bits and bobs, which we'll talk about later. I'll show you all my bits and bobs. But little colour swatches. Um, information about the house sparrow is a bird of the sparrow family. Um, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, some like bits of... Bits of work I've done in the past that you think, well, I'm not going to sell that, but it's a bit too nice to chuck out, so stick it in here. And I like extending. I like putting something in and then extending it and then put labels in. Trees are vital as the biggest plants on the planet. They give us oxygen, store carbon, stabilise the soil and give life to wildlife. If only people would actually realise that, that they are the lungs of, of the earth. But there we go, let's not get into anything political. Music amongst the trees. Um, yeah, I changed some of these. Some of the things that were actually on here were like pictures of fashion of ladies. And I thought, I don't like those. So I actually changed them. So this is to do with Dentdale, which is just the next village along to me. So to, to sort of get the idea of, of how it would look. But this is, you know, like, and postcards, because I got this from... Um, a gallery I went to see it was Turner and you know so you could so that's the way it comes like a bit of a scrapbook as well trees matter you see I've got a bit of a passion for trees uh, more postcards you know so it's a really nice way to collect things that was a bit of a painting that I did uh, as a study and I put that in I don't know what that's doing in there oh that's a little thing that Stuart sold I need to give him that um, you yeah, know, some of my little workshop flyers are nice to put in because the colours look good, colour swatches, maps, bits of music. Okay, right, so that's an altered book, a sort of altered book. And if you want to know more about it, I do have these three, and I've no idea whether they still, these are still in print, but this is a book about altered books. It's called, it's by Holly Harrison. And if I sort of just flip you can begin to see what I mean. So this is an original book, which has been, the pages have been painted over, and then you can do what you want on them. 
here. Stick things on them. That's a bit different. That's a bit different too, but like these. So you paint over parts of the pages, but you can still leave like a hint of something shining through and you can write on it and so on. Because if you don't paint the pages, most books, most hardback books, the paper's got a shiny surface. So that's really difficult to draw on. Um, so you need to sort of sometimes paint it over with a matte emulsion. You know, it doesn't have to be white. And then you can work back into it. And it's just good fun. I love that page. I think that's really good. Remember those dollies that we used to get with little little tabs on that you used to put over the shoulders? I used to love those. That was in the days that, you know, before computers and all these apps that you can um, do these fashion model and dress them all up on, on these apps now. Well, this was before that. This was in the steam age. And uh, yeah, so that is a really nice book. How beautiful that is. You could spend hours, couldn't you? You see, that, that gives you a good idea. Somebody has just painted over part of the page. You can still be, see bits of the text and then started to do some drawing. Right, so that's that one, if you're interested to look at that. This is another one. This is journal and sketchbooking, so not necessarily altered, but it does give you some good ideas of things that you can put in your books. You know, you might just be somebody who likes to write. So you might think... I'm feeling a bit down today and I don't want to get all my gear out and uh, I'm not really artistic anyway, blah, blah, blah. You could sit down with a few Sharpies, coloured pencils, whatever, and just start writing. You could even write about all the words, that you, how you feel today. You know, whatever. It's for anybody, this. But I just think they are fabulous. Uh, it's a real therapy, you know, art. Um, and I get so fed up with... Oh, here I am again on my political journey. You know, the, the government sort of cutting all the arts. I've had to defend my subject the whole of my adult life. And they, they cut and cut and cut until, you know, there's hardly anything left in schools now. Uh, and it just, it's such a great therapy. And without art in the world, you know, what would the world be like? Uh, anyway, there we go again. And you know these little slides? My dad used to have hundreds. In fact, I've got one here, just have a dig. You know these? In fact, I wonder who that is. That's probably me. Let me see. Oh, I'm having a look there. Oh, I might be my brother. My brother is a little boy. But you can take those out and then you can paint on these and stick these in, stitch on them. Um, it, it's just great. It, it's just really, really great. I just get excited looking at it. Um, let's look through there. Yeah, stick beads on. You have to be careful about the things not being too raised, but there is a way around that, and we'll talk about that as I go along. I'm not going to tell you everything today. And then finally, the decorated page. This is just another one. So that was by somebody called Lynn Perella. This is by Gwen. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. And the decorated page. It's the same again. Not, not quite the same, but it, it gives you an idea. I think for what we're talking about, the other two books are probably better. But yeah, it gives you some lovely ideas. Yeah, really nice ideas. Like, just, it's just done loads of writing. Uh, I'm not a big writer myself, except for quotes and things like that. But that doesn't mean to say that you're not. Right, so enough of that. So if you want to do this, the first thing you need to do is to get yourself a book. And I would say a hardback book. And you know, I, was, I would say not too small, but do you know what? I think even a small book would look beautiful. It depends how you work or what your personality is. If you like small detailed things, and maybe a little book would be beautiful. So I'm not going to say that, but I'm going to work bigger. And it does seem a bit like sacrilege sometimes because I was looking at what sort of book I could change. And you think, oh God, it seems such a shame to change this. But it is making it into something more beautiful. Uh, it doesn't have to be, because I paint the sea and nature a lot, and I thought, well, it doesn't have to be a book about the sea and nature. It can be a book about anything. So don't be restricted by that. But I've actually chosen this book by Kay Fassett, so I do apologise, Kay. The reason I've chosen it, it's a nice hardback book, is because it's got these beautiful coloured pages. Yeah, look at that, I could... I could paint over that, but then just leave maybe a little bit of the eye. And then I could, that might give me the inspiration to do a whole page about, uh, you know, looking, being observant or, you know, 
looking inside yourself or, you know, anything to do with seeing. So, yeah, so I'm just thinking on top of my head now. Yeah, beautiful. But some beautiful coloured pages, which I could paint over bits, but leave little bits showing through and then draw on the rest. So I thought that would be a nice, a really nice book to change. So it's going to look nothing like this at all. Uh, but look at that, gorgeous, beautiful. I mean, and they're the colours that I'm drawn to. So I would leave a bit of that maybe. But I'm not necessarily going to make this a book about the sea and nature. I'm not. And I don't know what I'm going to do in it yet. And that's the beauty of it. So the first thing to do is get a book and take off the front cover. I quite like the fact that that's just a blank book. Um, so that will give us, I'm not, we're not going to do the cover now either. Let's just make a start. So you need your book. And then what I want you to do is we're going to take a few pages out. Because if I look at that other book I showed you at the beginning. Oh, can you see what's happening? It's getting really fat, which I do like, actually. But by the time, because I'm up, where am I up to? I'm up to here. But if I carry on sticking loads of things in here, and there's already been stuff stuck in here, it's going to be like, it's going to be like that, isn't it? You're not going to be able to shut it at all. So I'm going to take out a few pages. And I'm not going to do the whole book. I'm just going to do a bit of it, and then we'll see how we go. So you think, well, what pages shall I take out? Well, that's not interesting really to me. So I could take that out, I could take that out, I could take that out, and that, and that. And I could think, well, maybe I'll leave that. So I could start off by taking these out. Now, when you take them out, you could take, you could cut them out right here. Be careful you don't get too near the spine, otherwise they're going to actually fall apart. Or you could do it decorative. I've got these decorative like deco cut scissors or you could tear it there's nothing stopping you tearing it so i'm gonna have a go at that i'm gonna have a go, have a go. Ooh, i've made a start at tearing it like that and oh i've not even paid for this book downstairs yet oh yeah i'll make sure that she's we can see that sorry joe i will come and pay for this in a minute um because we have a second-hand book stall here at Farfield Mill. I've just gone and chosen one and I've not even paid for it. Like that, that there. Right, okay. So that's taken a little bit of the weight out of it. I might take a little bit more off there. And you could leave it like that or you could stick these together. So you could just put a bit of glue in there. And I'm just using basic PVA glue. But you know what? You could use flour and water. Did you ever used to use that? <laughs> Once again, that's telling you how old I am. My mum and I used to do papier-mâché with flour and water because I know when I'm making bread, if I've got like a flour and water mixture which gets in the sink and I don't wipe it off immediately, it's almost impossible to get off. So it's good glue substitute. But I think I'm just going to leave that like that for now. And I quite oh, I love that page. So I don't want to get rid of that one. Oh, I'm not overly worried about that one. So this time I might just cut it. And you can see, you know, you don't have to um, take it right to the spine. And I'm not being overly careful. But that's quite nice because I could paint a little bit of that and, you know, I could stitch on it. I could even do some of my own stitching on it, something like that. Anyway. I'm just thinking aloud. Love that page, love that page. Um, maybe with that one, I will have part of it, because this is the other thing. All your pages don't need to be rectangular. So that might be quite nice to do something like that, because you've got this behind and that here and then I'll paint over that. So quite like that one. Um, not overly bothered about that. Uh, let me think. I'm going to leave that because the other thing that I, I'm going to say is that you can actually stick some pages together as well because it gives it more strength. So I think I'm going to stick those two together. And well, I love that one, as I, I told you before. And I, oh, I love that. Look at that. Oh, that's very me. 
and I think I'll stick that one together. So I'm thinking now as I'm going along, um, I think I'll stick all of those together. So look, I'm just gonna sort of stop at that. I'm not gonna do anything with the front, these front bits at the moment. I think I might stick those together. But as I say, I just need to show Jo that so that she can actually put it through the till. And I'm not going to stick those together. I'm gonna to leave them. So I'm gonna leave that. But do I want to cut a bit of that off? What would it be like? Um, see, I could paint over that. What about if I cut a bit of that off? Yeah, I'm gonna cut that off. As I say, don't be too precious about drawing a line and cutting it. Try and be a bit more spontaneous. I don't want you to overthink it. It's a therapy. Now I might use that, you see, so don't get rid of it, put it in your bit box. But I quite like the fact that that's, yeah, that's okay. And then I'm gonna, there, am I gonna stick that together? No, I'm gonna paint over that. Definitely gonna paint over that. And then I might, see, what we will do eventually is, and when you suck some of the pages together, We'll cut little windows out, so you can cut a whole window out so you can see the page through, or it can be a window that's cut on three sides so it opens. Yeah, do you understand that principle? And I quite like that. So I'm just gonna make a start now, sticking a few together. So I'm not gonna stick those together, I'm gonna use those as the yarn. I'm gonna paint over that, quite like that as it is. I don't know about that. Don't know whether I like that or not. I'll leave it for now and I'll leave those for now and then I'm going to stick these two pages together. Right, <clears throat> let's get some, some glue on here. <clears throat> Got some really old brushes here. Um, and then give it a good old stick this. Yeah. Plenty on. You could probably water down your PVA. You, you, some of you might be saying, oh, I'd have left that page. But this is all personal. It's down to what you like, what you want to do. And you can't really make a mistake. You know, you can perhaps think, oh, I wish I'd left that page. But it's not really a mistake. You'll just change Change it and work with it. Work with it, that's probably what I mean. Say what you mean, Ruth. Um, keep going. You could get your hands in there if you want, but yeah, because the kids used to love doing that at school and then they, if they were bored, they'd, they'd paint PVA all over their hands and then they'd sit and peel it off through your lesson when they should be listening. Um, so if you're doing that while you're watching this, that means you're getting a bit bored. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. I don't know whether that's all gluey. Oh, that's just, that's probably okay. Like that. Then stick that to that. And then I might cut that down later. Let's just carry on a wee bit. We could do with a few more pages stuck together. Yep, yeah, I'm going to stick this one together. And I'm not even going to speed this up, you know. So if you think, yeah, yeah, I get what you're talking about now, then just, you know, you can actually just move me on a little bit, can't you? I don't need to do that for you. I've just realised they're shells, but no, I prefer that other page I was looking at. And uh, stick these together. Now, when we get near the end of the book, um, we'll stick quite a few pages together, or parts of pages together at the back, which will then be stuck to the back the back of the book here because then you can cut a little hole in that and you can pop in something 3d you know because like I've, I've got some of my mum's old silver charms off a charm bracelet I've got some of my dad's lovely old fishing flies and you could actually put them in a little a little box almost like a little jewel but th that's probably better near near the back, unless I find there's a way of doing it as I go along. And this is gonna be something, this is, you know, as I say, I've not rehearsed this, I'm just going with my gut reaction of what 
what I want to do. So I want you to get your book and do this, first of all, but not all the way through the book because you might change your mind about things. And then I'm going to stick this one. So this is now three pages thick, like that. And I'm rushing. You can just take your time. You could put a podcast on and listen to that, or you could put um, a television pro. I often do that. I often have television in the background, usually a film, and usually a film that I know really well that I don't need to watch. I can almost listen to. Or you could put the radio on, or you could put some lovely music on, or you could just have nothing. Uh, but be careful if you have nothing that you don't. Your mind doesn't start wandering like it does. Um, I'll probably be talking a lot about our chatty chimp. And in fact, on my online course, on my Ruth Clayton Artist um, page, I've got a full course there and we talk about the perfect workspace, but we also talk about the perfect mindset and how to actually pause the chatty chimp. And if you don't know what a chatty chimp is, then I congratulate you. Um, I want to know your secret because most of us have an internal dialogue that is going on all day long about um, things you've not done right and criticising yourself, thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done that, or things that we did yesterday or what we're going to do tomorrow instead of focusing on the here and now. Uh, and I read a great book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. He's a German. Not everybody likes the book, but... It was, yeah, it really worked for me. And it was just trying to be more mindful. I know it's a very buzzword, isn't it, that? But if only we could. So if you sit there in absolute silence, you might just be allowing your mind to wander a bit too much and you're not just being in the now. So put something on that's going to help you. There we go. Now, I might not go much further than that. Um, you know, you get the idea that I've cut out some of these. I'm going to paint bits of these. I might stick them together later. I've cut that out there. I, I can see that being a nice page. I've cut, I'm, I'm still not sure about that, but I think that will work. Love that page. Now I've got nice... Oh, that's beautiful too. Then we've got this here. I could stick that to that, in fact, but I don't know yet. And, and then we've got three... Oh, two pages are stuck together there. And don't worry about them being all cockily, it's fine. That's just the beauty of the book. And then I've stuck three together there. And that's probably enough to start with. Yeah? So that's, that's it for today. Let me know if you're going to have a go. Ask me any questions. Um, and let's just have some fun together. Yeah, I'm just looking at that now. That would look nice on there, wouldn't it? Maybe at the end. Yeah. Um, Oh, excuse me. And then I will show you next time all my little bits and bobs, um, bits of fabric. And, you know, and then these are great, actually, for actually painting out your pages. Because that is something, just before you go, that is something that you could do before the next one, because then it's got time to dry. But if you wanted to paint over a few pages, well, let me just do it now um, before you go. Now, these are great because they've got a brush in already. But as you can see, that's dead. So I'm going to have to, oh, it's got a brush in here as well, brilliant. Get matte if you can, because if you get silk or satin, then it, it's very difficult to draw on. So you could paint out what you want. You could leave little bits showing. Like I like that purpley bit there. You put my hands probably in the way. Just do a little bit over there. And if you don't want it to go on your other pages, I'm just thinking about that now, then put something oh, underneath it. Like that. And it might need more than one coat. Two of these brushes, they don't go right to the right to the bottom of the pot. So you might need more than one coat. You might want to completely get rid of everything. or not but don't be too careful because see I'm I'm a trained illustrator so I do find it difficult sometimes to be spontaneous 
And this is why I'm quite excited about doing this today. Whether, you know, there might only be me doing it, I might be sat talking to myself. But if anybody does, even if it's just one person, that would be lovely. Um, but I'm quite excited about doing it for myself, to be honest. It's a long time since I've done one. I just feel like I just needed to, something just to free up a little bit. Because, as I mentioned in my other rambles, I've just spent so much time getting this course online and, uh, you know, looking at the technology side. And if it's one thing I really don't like, it's it's all the technology. And But we have to embrace it if we want to get anywhere. I understand that, but I needed a break. So I quite like that as it is. So I'm just going to leave it. So you can see why maybe it's a good idea to do that because that will have to dry before I do maybe another page. I could paint that as well, but if I did that, you would definitely need to put something underneath it there. Um, yeah, I might do that right now. Um, just before, just before you go. So you can see, I'll leave a little bit of that showing through. Like that. And that's, the jobs are good, as my dad would have said. There, that's better. I'm happier with that now. Uh, and it's all crinkly, but just let it dry. So, go and get to that stage, and then we'll carry on. <laughs> 